Christ, what the hell did I drink last night? <laughs> well, I, um, I don't know. What did you drink last night? You've actually been getting out on the town a lot lately. Uh, espresso martini and four straight rums, I think. <laughs> Yatsu Kroshaw, man about town. What the fuck's this? Oh, I just figured it out. This is history, history, history. I think big money, big prizes. I love it. I think you'll find it Smash TV. It's totally which, Smash So TV. which one's you and which one am I? Um, you're nobody. Although we could be playing this. Um, guy on the right saying, look, there's the guy who took our shirts. <laughs> Give me my shirt back. It's cold. So this, um, based on the amazingly excellent Arnold Schwarzenegger film, Running Man. Really? I thought it was Total Recall. <laughs> so, and, you know, it's, it's 20, it's 20, what are we, 2014? We should be getting to death games. Oh, yawn. It's a dual joystick shooter. Well, like, yeah, we don't have enough of those these days. Well, huh. yeah, that's... This huh. is the John Carter of dual joystick shooters, okay? This is important, you need to see this. This is history. Wait, so it was really expensive and shit and nobody watched it? Um, no, it was the first one and everyone, you know, if you look at this... I know what you meant. <laughs> Fucking hell. I was talking for the audience, you ring. Well, even they aren't that thick. <laughs> <sighs> Listen, I know... You were probably an intellectual powerhouse in whatever bogan shit ass school you went to. But Good now man. you're in the real world, you have to talk to people of equal intelligence as well. See, Yahtzee says that now, but oh, you should hear him when you're not listening. What? Just because <laughs> I have the intellectual security to occasionally allow myself to appear a bit thicker and a bit slower. No, you don't. <laughs> you fucking don't. Well, what are you getting at then? Um, just that, okay, like a lot of the, this game was made in 1990. Yes. I'd say a fair chunk of our viewers may have been born either then or post then and would have had no reason. Okay, it's not an intelligence thing, it's a matter of just experience. No reason to have well, ever touched it, Smash well, Brothers. The fact. Or Smash TV. So I'm going to be doing that all fucking day and we're calling it Smash Brothers. That wasn't what I was referring to though. Yeah, and that, the it's thing the that I was that saying was just a snide remark to annoy YouTube commenters so they can jump on and go, Hey, fuck that guy. It was hardly a serious assessment of, like, you know, the entire, like, viewership that we have. But I, I made a snarky remark. See, this is the conversation I believe I'm having. I made a snarky remark and you took it literally for a second. Because <laughs> I can't tell with you. You like to annoy me, because you, you hate, like, the little zen thing that I do. You like to get me... This is what Yahtzee does, he gets me angry before we do these things. Eat my shrapnel, Gabe. No, I'm gonna kill the dude, because I don't want to eat his shrapnel. Oh, shit the fuck. Alright. You, you got bald, son. That's not shrapnel. You a baller. Um, but yeah, like, yes, there are a lot of these games these days, and... Uh, a lot of them are actually kind of fun. Like, there was one that came with, um, one of the zombie... Games recently, like oh, what, oh that's, do not even ask how many zombie dual joystick shooters there are in the world. Yeah, I know it, it's it, it's it's been a bit swamped, but that's why I made the John Carter remark. It's basically yeah, there's a lot of it these days, and it's easy to see this is sort of being derivative. But I'm pretty sure this is one of the earlier ones. I don't think it's the earliest, but I, I see. Know I'd have uh, said um, Kim, King Solomon's Mines for the very beginning of the Great White Hero genre. Oh, for the John Carter yes, reference. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, I mean John Carter in terms of a lot of sci-fi tropes. Alan Quatermain uh, is the progenitor of such characters as Indiana Jones and Dog Savage and all of those. For more information, consult your local League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Extraordinarily uh, modern thinker, Ryder Haggard, when he wrote King Solomon's Mines. Really? Because it is a great white hero book, but uh, the actual hero hero who, like, saves the day is his, like... Uh, African, you know, Batman. All right. Who uh, becomes He's a credit to his race? Who becomes the king of the lost tribe? And actually, there's passages in King Solomon's Mind where Ryder Haggard talks about how much he doesn't like the word nigger, <laughs> and he thinks Africa should be run by Africans. Remarkably, because he did actually live in it Africa. It must have, yeah. It must have been really hard to like. I suppose not. I mean, this is the thing. We. It's interesting reading history because people back then race just existed like it wasn't like today where you kind of just go we're all the same back then even if you weren't racist race was still a big thing like you were just yeah, well, whatever could, race you were so well, yes. well i mean it's it's kind of complex to apply sort of modern ideas of what's racist and what's not to sort of those yeah areas. i mean is it necessarily racist to say that 
ex people of such and such a race are usually have these qualities because of their usual upbringing. Well, it depends on how specific you want to get. Like, I think color is dumb because that's literally quite meaningless. But mm -hmm. you get, um, you know, you can sort of describe culture because culture is a participatory thing. Like, in order to be part of a culture, you have to acknowledge and participate in it. Yes, I think that's what the word participatory means. Thanks for clarifying. Continue. Um, yeah, so like, you can talk about like sort of cultural traits, because that's not... You know, I, I don't think that's involving anybody who isn't actually involved. You know what I mean? Like, if, you, if you're talking about a, a, a behavior, then you have to fulfill that behavior to be being the one talked about. And whereas I think the offense is in talking about someone as though they all participate in a behavior because of something that is... Can I stop is... you there? Because I don't know what you're on about. Could I request you do the stop, think, and then speak thing? I'm getting there. Okay, well, well let, let's do the uh, sum up your argument in less words that are in this sentence thing. Okay, well... Ten seconds. Oh, now I've got ten seconds. Is this killing your mind? They were right! TV's killing your mind! It is funny going back, like, I was thinking about Doctor Who the other day, like, early Doctor Who before the fucking Wait, internet ruined it. Wait, you mean there are times in your day when you're not thinking about Doctor Who? Believe it or not, yes. Ah, oh, they put a life on a mine! Hey, jibs! <sighs> fucking jerks. Um... I wonder what the first game that had jibs was. I mean, I know John Romero claims to have invented the word. I not I, I have no information with which to argue that. Okay. So maybe maybe he does. I don't know. Do you think like you you you, you probably know a little. You're bit, listening right? to the tangent hour. Well, that's what the opening of these usually is before we get into the topics. Well, well, I was hoping you'd continue the race argument so I could say something clever like, "Lucky we've got race sorted out. Shame about gender, eh?" <laughs> Cuz then we can talk about the Finnish Hearthstone tournament thing. That's hilarious for a lot of reasons. Like, one of my favorite things is insanity that makes regular insanity seem sane by comparison. All right, can we, uh, can we summarize the story before we analyze it, please? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, I thought well, that, how, was, what that was pretty it? much a good summary. I mean, you can summarize it, because that was, you brought it up. Have we met our bicker quota yet? I'm not sure. Um, no. no, no. Anyway, do, do there, was a, quota? there was a Hearthstone tournament in Finland that raised a big old stink because uh, it was men only. Because well, there's... Would, would you like to explain this? This is really weird. Okay, yeah, see, I read probably a, a, a little more into it, because, again, I just found it fascinating. And the thing I love about video games is, once you add, like, you know, various, you know, different controllers that people can get, it's really inclusive. I saw a thing about a kid who helped another kid who was blind to play through Ocarina of Time, and he managed to get through that with, like, assistance and instructions. You are still listening to the Tangent Hour. No, but this is what I mean, like, you know, video games are accessible, that's what's, you know, great about them. You don't have to be fit, you don't have to be healthy, like, you can, you can do lots of shit, you know, in video games. What did and I just say? So I said, can we summarize this story before we analyze it? Yeah, and that's the point, is like, um, you can go back to this discussion. Just explain the fine details of the, the what's going on with this tournament. The All right. So they had a thing. Basically, they had a, a Hearthstone tournament, and that's not a game I'm really familiar with. But you don't really need to be to sort of understand this thing. And they they put a gender divide in. And here's the yes. thing: it wasn't just a gender divide where it's like, okay, there's like Hearthstone men's and Hearthstone women's. Yes. The which, gender which is, divide... Which is in itself a bit dumb. Yeah, well, no, well, that's fucking retarded. Like, again, there is zero relevance gender plays in how you play like a well, fucking Well, the story I got told ridiculous. was that they felt they had to put that in because that's how they would feel like a real sport. Well, that doesn't make much sense. No, it makes no sense because it's not actually because it makes sense in a physical sport because there, yes. there's a different physical baseline from the genders. With a few exceptions, um, there's been some really. I'm really interested in now in um, female strength as it relates to body weight because there's a girl in the states who was um, doing like collegiate wrestling and in her weight category she was like almost unbeaten. It was really, really like and against dudes. So I think there's like there's there's a good argument for it being based more around around like kind of weight categories as opposed to just like sort of outright gender. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, so this and again, it wasn't just like they divided it down gender lines, and that's the best part is dividing video game tournaments down gender lines is fucking retarded. What they did makes that seem sensible. Okay. They divided it along certain games for certain genders. So like. Yes, that's the mad thing. Yeah. So it was Hearthstone <laughs> for men, and what was Ultra it? Ultra Street Fighter 4 and Hearthstone for, for men, men, and Tekken Tag Tournament, and I think StarCraft 2 for women. Sorry, I'm getting texted. Ooh, Yahtzee's popular. <sighs> Yahtzee's popular. 
It's just my Are friend. Are you popular, Yahtzee? It's just my friend asking if I'm coming to his birthday party tonight. Ah, oh, Yahtzee gets invited to parties. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> he knows the score. Um, Why are you ripping on me for that? What's I'm just, I, I just, I, I enjoy teasing you. Um, so, yeah, and that's, like, you see what I mean? Like, a gender divide, like, if they just had, like, Street Fighter, yeah, I mean, Street people, Fighter 4, I men's and women's. I mean, I think there was some irresponsible, uh, hysterical journalism here, because they were talking about it like it's a misogynistic thing. But it's not even that, it's just something that doesn't make sense. Yeah! Two but games thing, for like, men, two games for women. Misogyny would have made more sense, that's the great part. This is what I love about, you know, fucking batshit crazy people. Misogyny makes sense, Gabriel Morton, 2014. <laughs> well, comparatively. Comparatively to the insanity that went ahead. Well, like, uh, why know. Tekken Tag Tournament for women? Maybe they like, just why want... Ultra Street Fighter for men? What's the difference? Maybe, like... they just, maybe they just wanted to add arbitrary rules so it could be like American football. <laughs> you looked at someone and they burped. Red flag. Um, yeah, but that, that was a funny thing. Like, that was the really... I, I like it because that means someone has sat down and thought about this. Like, this wasn't an accident. You didn't just roll the dice and go, this is, these yeah. are the games. Well, Someone's had to think and go, okay, what game is for women? Ah, oh, Tekken Tag Tournament. Well, you know, to play devil's advocate for a bit, maybe you could uh, uh, say that uh, gender segregated tournaments, like a men's tournament for Hearthstone and a women's tournament for Hearthstone, could make sense if you made the argument that uh, we don't know that there's a different baseline skill level between men and women when it comes to video gaming, but we don't know there isn't one either. I... Uh, there'd have to be some... Something upon which you could predicate that. Well, then, someone, someone might be able to argue that um, uh, men are more. Uh, you know, I think. What was it that was determined? Men are more you know, geometric thinkers, and women are more something else thinkers. Well, yeah, but according you know, by those old things as well, like women were better at like multitasking, which I think would be you know kind of good for those kinds of games. Well, yes. So if anything, like, maybe maybe, so maybe if there is something about it. if there is some basic biological thing that gives men an, an advantage or women an advantage, then maybe you could make you could argue for a gender segregated games tournament. Bear in mind, people already commenting. Yahtzee is saying, maybe, and trying to understand I'm, this yes, process. Yes, I'm playing devil's advocate here. That's <laughs> like, just what you do on the internet. Yes. I mean, I was, I'm was i making a point of pride now that every time I read a hysterical article, I automatically Google the details and I know. Well, you have for to, both and sides. You, you should do that as well. <laughs> like, I was reading an article from uh, a feminist writer who was talking about how... Uh, uh, how because she's a Dicks. how she's a woman in in the tech industry she is uh, under a constant barrage of uh, attacks from from uh, well she was saying men for just for being a woman in the tech industry with big ideas and being a big bossy boots and stuff and you know she was she was making a pretty tragic case and uh, I'm not saying misogyny never happens because clearly there are individual cases of it, but there were certain uses of phrase she had that sort of made me smell a rat, you know, in the article. Mm. Like, she was, like, she said something about, everybody calls me insane. I just got an image of Frankenstein in his workshop going, they called me mad! And then, and she was also saying that it's not just men, but women who have been corrupted by men who, uh, who are talking shit about her online. You know what I love about that? The worst thing for fucking women's self-esteem is other women. I've been, like, part yeah. of my education thing, I've been reading about, like, um, girl, girl on girl bullying. And fuck me sideways. Like, man bullying is, like, learning how to make fire. Girl bullying is, like, cold fusion. Like, mm. the shit, like, organized. Yeah, yeah the, the male like, bullies just go, what are you looking at? Yeah, Boom. faggot and punch you. Female <laughs> bullies, just... female bullies get fucking psychological, <laughs> man. <laughs> yeah, and like, I, I mean like driving people to suicide actively and deliberately and in yeah. very organized manners. Unless we forget, for both genders, it's usually the same gender that shames people for their appearance. Mm. I mean, I don't know, see, and... Take, like, I think one of the arguments put forward by the Hearthstone thing was trying to make it, like, sort of an inviting environment to women because men are automatically hostile to women on the internet, which I don't think is exactly right. Well, all it takes is one or two examples. Well, I mean, look, if online gaming, like, I don't online game because people on the internet are dicks. Yeah. Like, if online gaming was everyone being a gentleman until women showed up, then you'd have a point that it was gender-driven 
exclusionary behavior. Oh, I would, I did once uh, see, there was a Red Spray video once where they were uh, riffing over someone, a video someone posted of, I think it was Modern Warfare online. And uh, the guy was playing, he heard the voice of a woman on the chat, and he just, like, went mad. Oh, yeah. No, I, I, but see, this is the interesting thing. But he wasn't, like, you know, yelling at her, insulting her or anything. He was, like, uh... Doing the sad, trying to pick her up thing. Kinda. Yeah. And that's he, that's and almost it, worse in some examples, like, just... Like, like, there was another guy on the chat, and at one point, the guy who recorded the video said, Ooh, are we sharing her now? Ha ha ha, lol lol lol. I'm just fucking around. I was, so that's what I mean, like... Actually, I was so inspired by that, I wrote a poem about it for Rhyme Down Spectacular. It was the one marvelous. I... Marvelous. It was the one I named the Analogy of the Mosquito, <laughs> fans of mine. Um, well, again, see, like, I, again, rereading about, like, ostracism and why we exclude and in-groups and out-groups and stuff like that. Which, yeah. sadly, not really studied until a bunch of kids shot up a school, so... Yeah. Um... Well, surely that is entirely the fault of the guns industry. Yeah, well, um... That's the usual argument. Well, no, I... It's funny with that there's, Elliot there's, social, Rod there's social pressures involved. Funny thing with that Elliot Roger thing, like, the same day, one of the fathers of the victims, like, in, with, in the same breath as expressing his grief, was saying, this is why we need gun control, everyone. Well, I mean, you know... The Onion not, had a great I'm article, saying, which was, uh, you know, no, no way to stop thing that only occurs in this country. <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying I disagree, but... Uh, well, yeah, cause, again, like, it's it, it, it's hard. These things are fucking very complicated, and that's why I don't like reducing them down to basic things. Because well, there I are think, countries well, with think, a similar amount of guns that don't have these issues. Well, doing the most basic thing to keep assault rifles out of p the potentially mentally ill might help. I don't think he used an assault rifle, I think he used a pistol. Well, he used something. Um, but even so, you know, the gun, the gun lobbyists even lobby against the slightest attempt to to stop it. They, they well, lobby the gun against, lobby in the states is a tad. They lobby bad, against background uh, checks. Least. They lobby against like large magazines for guns. Who the hell's going to need them outside of a, some kind of guerrilla war? Um, mm. Well, they lobby against the the uh, restriction of large magazines for guns. I meant to say, it makes no sense. Well, I mean, again, it's. The sad reality of any society is that you make rules to because of the idiots, and they will always hinder the normal people. You know, it's like it's like, it's like bar work. Like you have to have a big pile of rules. It shouldn't have to be there. So do you long to live in a world where the great will not be constrained <laughs> by the small? Uh, no, I long to live in a world where the great assists the small to become great. Oh well, what if the great have got better things to do, like all the great things they do that make them great? <laughs> well, fortunately, there's lots of people, so there's you know you can you can spend some time to assist, you can spend some time, you can fertilize the soil, you can help people become better. Well, this is all a whole lot of coulda, woulda, shoulda so far. Well, we'll get there. We're we're still a shitty young species, like you know. Well, we've been around for forty about long. forty thousand years as. Most most humans. of the important history within the last two ten. two millennia, of course. Yeah, and ten is a species with identifiable, noticeable culture. Give Just, or take, you know, those, those aren't uh, hard lines. No, it's occurred to me there's probably like five million YouTube comment arguments going on already. We've covered gun control. We've covered misogyny in the games industry. Covered's a generous term, but well, yes, we, I get well, what you mean. When I yes. say <laughs> when I say covered, we've mentioned it. It's mentioned. Let's see if we can fire more shit up. I just want to. I, 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 I want to have the most apoplectic just ooh, fits on ooh, the YouTube ooh, don't ooh, don't challenge me. <laughs> uh, people who are depressed just need to pull their bootstraps up and get happy. <laughs> you know what the brutal reality is? That's part of it. Oh god, I was I was kidding. Don't go there. No, you do need to reach out. You do need to get help. Um, but look, here's the thing. Even if you take like the medication to get yourself better, right? I wasn't serious. I'm making this a topic, by the way. No, too too bad. Now it is because this is something that I really had to fucking deal with. Um, yes, yes. The will to take the medication. Oh, you is, really had to deal with it, Gabe. I didn't yeah. realize because you're so you know you're so slow to talk about it. Uh, it's important to talk about. It's important. People, people think they're alone, and you're not. So that's that's a big part of it. All right. It, it could, yeah. It's it's Remember even when... the, the the will to change at all is a huge part of it. So that's important. If you can do that, then that's that's a big step. Hey, you died again, Gabe. Yeah, this is Smash TV, man. This is an old fucking coin eater. This. Yeah. You aren't meant to get through this on one life. Yeah, I was texting you during the week, and you said you had an arcade game, an older arcade game to play, and I said I look forward to seeing you die over and over again. <laughs> what did I send back? You said that will definitely happen. Yep. Because uh, you are shit at games. Yeah, yeah. 
Oh, pain. Your death animation's kind of weird. Um, depends on what hits me. Don't remember that from the running man. Um, oh. I think the thing that I wanted to get back to, though, was about, like, okay, so people make the point that no child's born sort of sexist or homophobic or racist, and that's true. But what children are born is horrible, exclusionary little bastards. I think uh, what is true is that people have instinctual gender roles. Um, people instinctually yeah, yeah. notice the differences, and they instinctually well, that's like, the, like, want to <coughs> exclude the outsider. That, well, that's you know that, that that's my problem with some of the cart before the horse thinking that goes on is culture is a res result of humans, not the other way around exactly. It's a feedback that you know we get. It's not the feed. But I mean, like you know, but, but beside from that, people I've seen kids, all oh. of whom are dressed in like green shirts. And one kid's just happened to dress in a blue shirt, and they will just fucking jump on that kid. Like, and we will have all seen this. Like, we all yeah. you know, have seen kids act just fucking horribly. So yeah, and I mean, that's what it is. Like, it's when you say just let kids be kids, but uh, then, they're horrible. They're really fucking terrible. Then we'll end up with another Nazi party. <laughs> okay. Um, what? And so and so so that's the thing. Like, it's it's important to know that. Just in circumstances where being female is the variable, they're going to pick on the variable. If or if there was all video chat and one person in the video chat was wearing a hat, they'd pick on the hat. Yes. Like, it's an exclusionary behavior that picks what is noticeably different. So it is important and to notice that the, the, the fluid is not the shape of the glass. The glass Burn shapes the, the fluid. Burn the witch. Yeah. And Ostracize, I mean, it's not to say that there aren't, like, fucking, you know, more concentrated dickholes out there, but... Like, the other important factor is nobody can really hate, you can't hate a whole gender or race. You yeah, hate that's... a series of negative um, personality traits that you then apply to a whole gender or race. You know what's a little worrying is how every single first world nation seems to be attracting an increasing anti-immigration movement. Uh, that just, that just flares up every now and again. Pe people get paranoid, people get afraid, and when people get afraid they worry about mooches. I just wonder and what they're- governments that operate on fear will I wonder what they're afraid of. I mean, we've all kind of over 9-11 at this point. I mean, look at the new battlefield in Call of Duty. They're not even... There's not even a single level set in the Middle East in either of them. That's progress, ladies and gents. In Battlefield Hardline, is going to be about cops and crims now. Oh, and, really? And uh, advanced warfare is all in the future. So I just feel this is a clear sign that the games industry has gone off contemporary warfare. That, that in turn, is a sign to me that humans are kind of gotten over that whole terrorist scare. Uh, the, the, again, the terrorist scare is an extension of the in-group, out-group thing. And that's... I think what it is is that uh, X. there have been so many shootings in America lately, oh, that, and, and the gun lobbyists won't do a thing to, to work to stop them, so everyone's just sort of having to accept the fact that we might get massacred, and there's absolutely fuck all you can do about it. You, and even shunning the outsider doesn't seem to help anymore. Well, the problem is shunning the outsider works when there's only so far they can go. There's like concentric circles of social relevance. If you push someone so far that they go outside of your circle, then you have no social power over them. And that's when you start to get maladaptive behaviors because it threatens what's called meaningful existence. So when someone feels like nobody cares about them whatsoever, that's when they start shooting up schools and getting, like, really sort of bad. And I that's what I mean when I say social pressure is a really effective means of modifying behavior, but it has to be applied very gently. I think what's also a problem is that women aren't having sex with enough neck beards. <laughs> Have sex with more neck beards, yeah. it might save your life. Uh, God, I hate those people. Nobody's obligated to love you or fuck you. Well, like, we know that. Fucking God damn it. But to argue the devil's advocate, no one's obligated to be your friend either. No, nobody is. And that's an important thing too, is not being included isn't the same as being excluded. That's an important fucking factor. No one has to invite you to their birthday party. Well, thank you for this week's Sermon on the Mound. So, how are we going on the game? Oh, you're shooting a bunch of guys. Yeah, brain that's, dudes. That's changed a lot. Try and tell me what those are. I think they're like brains. Dudes with the, uh, yeah, exposed tops of their heads, maybe. <laughs> Wearing red armor with their hands held out. All overlapping each other because they're circus performers and they're all standing on each other's heads. Mm -hmm. uh, invincibilities. That's and also one. there's some uh, Civil War reenactors <laughs> coming in behind them. And a man with a tank for an arse. He's just differently able. Shit. No, you'd probably do better if you had a shirt on. 
Not going into a death match with at least a top is probably a bad idea. What, um, what do you think that helmet's going to do, man? <laughs> are you afraid of Are you afraid of falling lighting rigs? It is actually really. That's a, the only time I've ever thought about it. The game's called Smash TV. It's a death competition, and they give you a helmet. They give you a helmet. <laughs> Maybe it's just to make you stand out for the cameras. Is That's that, you know that what, is probably it. Watch for the blue dot. Yeah. On the dull mauve floor. That is probably fucking it. Try, try also to look out for the orange skinned chest. <laughs> they sit you in a tanning booth for a little while before. Yeah, I mean this in. is probably like he's probably like a past winner who's come back and his prize last time was a tanning booth. Um, in Okay, so this was made by Midway, um, who are the same folks that made Mortal Kombat. I knew that. And in Mortal Kombat uh, lore, Johnny Cage is said to have won uh, Celebrity Smash TV. That's kind of cool. Yeah. It's almost uh, a, a Wald Newton family thing, isn't it? Mm. What's that? Uh, we talked about it ages, ages ago, the Philip Jose Farmer thing, where all the characters from all, all fictional works live in like a shared universe, and you can, oh, yeah. just, you can tie them together in... League of Extraordinary Gentlemen kind of ways. That is fun. I do enjoy that. Like I watched, um, I watched Lego Movie last night. Ah, well, this will bring us into Culture Corner. Yeah. You watched the Lego Movie. How was that then? A lot of fun. Which is weird, considering it is like an, you know, ninety-minute-long ad for Lego. I've heard it was good. Yes. Well, I think it's. I mean, they took a lot of weird risks that just paid off. Like they made it interesting. They made it an interesting film with a lot of weird little moments. I'd say it's heavily influenced by sort of, you know, modern children's animation, but what to, seems its, to, to its be, benefit. What seems to be the holy grail in uh, virtually all cultures these days is something that uh, has equal appeal to kids and grown-ups. Well, it means, you know, you've got a lifetime viewer. Yeah. Like, so people try I'm going to gonna show the fucking Toy Story movies to my kids, mostly because it means they won't break their fucking toys. People try to force it a lot. I mean, uh, this is like the whole raison d'etre of the DreamWorks animation studio. We're always trying to work in a few gags for Dad. In DreamWorks is, I think, a little more like... In the Shrek films and stuff. Thin with it. Because I, I think what made... Um, uh, penis. You got what killed by the plate. Yeah. Or the Roomba monster. The Roomba monster. The Doomba. Um, oh, nice! Yeah. High five! <laughs> Theoretical high five because I'm holding a controller. Fuck you. Mind you, five. You left me hanging, bro. Uh, I just blew that guy's eyeball out. I don't care. You didn't high five me. Yahtzee's gonna bring this up later. Yes, I will. <laughs> oh, oh, stay in your corner. Nobody puts big face in the corner but me and my rocket. Ah. Oh. I'm the one who has to watch back these videos and every annoying thing you do, I have to be exposed to again and again. <laughs> Uh, you know, I'm friends with you, right? And then I'm exposed to all the annoying things you do all the time. Well, that's good. It means it's, uh, it's a give-and-take relationship. Yeah. Well, I just, I don't know, I just don't really care. Like, I expect people to annoy me, it's just, you know, this is a natural part of it. Okay. So, Lego Movie, then. Um, yeah, I think where it succeeds over where something like a dreamworks movie is a little bit more obnoxious is... The general way the film was the... You know how like DreamWorks like occasionally have like just a little moment where it's like, oh, that was funny. That sort of... And then they... For the, yeah, then they for go the, back to just being like really trite, dumb jokes. And then they put that bit in the trailer, and then for yeah. the next 12 films they put from the producers of that film that had the one funny moment. Ah, uh, fuck you, Skeletor. On the trailer. Yeah. Um, this sort of avoids that, and it maintains... It keeps the pace up and keeps the, the sense of humor up really well over the course of its whole run. So two thumbs up then? Um, yeah, you know, in a weird way, fucking yeah. Like, it's a lot of fun. It's a, it's a fun fucking film. And I wasn't bored during it, and it made me laugh on multiple occasions. The ending, probably the last about 20 minutes, started to get, I think, a bit too meta for me, personally. I wouldn't say that's an objective, you know, something I could objectively lay as a, a, a complaint about the film. But um, I can understand, like, if someone was, you know, watching and just going, eh, and starting to, you know, get a bit sort of sick of it by the end. I think Lego is one of those properties that's sort of transitioning to modern culture success story, you know? Really? Yeah, like, it's, it's done really well, because... Yeah, I mean, it's, think it's about sort of it, gone it's, away it's... from the pure creativity toy to... based on currently popular franchise... now. Mm. Oh, oh, that I love was, that noise. That was a funny noise. I mean, I played um, Lego City Undercover, which is very sort of deliberately self-aware and cynical about itself, but not... not Kinda misses the boat humor-wise a couple of times, but there are some lines in it I laughed at. Mm. 
But Lego does seem to be characterised by this very sort of self-aware humour now, on top of everything else. Well, it's the, I, I suppose it's just the natural sort of creativity of it. You know, Lego is not a character. So well, they're is. having to engage... It is. It's a little yellow man that you can... That can wear either a hat or a hairdo, See, that's, and not both. That sort of thing you just said is like one of the core plot elements probably of the Lego movie. I is, see. Is that, yeah. Like, like, what, it's a yeah, core that, plot element of Lego City Undercover as well. Yeah, like you're just a little Lego man. What are you, you know? Yeah, you wear different hats and you take on different abilities based on the entire Lego workforce. <laughs> so you can be a policeman or a farmer or a astronaut. I'd say if Lego Movie had anything really going for it, it was that it was paced well. Oh wow, I can afford a shirt now. Fuck no. Yay. Well, how would he put it on with those things on his wrists? <laughs> yeah, you just slide them over him. Maybe he could just wear like a short sleeve button shirt or it's something. It's funny because having watched loads of sci-fi, I keep sort of wondering why I don't have like a cool wrist communicator thing yet. And then I think, what if I just mounted my phone to my wrist? And then I think that's a horrible idea. Like, well, it just would not be convenient whatsoever. People are doing that. They're inventing the, uh, the Android watch. Yeah, but see, that's not exactly the phone. You know, that's a few of the phone capabilities in a thing you don't have to dig out of your pocket. You know like, what I, I keep thinking, like, what if I just put my phone on my thing? Ah, oh, I wouldn't be able to use both hands on it. That's just not convenient. Yeah, I mean, talking that's... into your watch is just really awkward and weird. Yeah. We know what would work is, um... Did you read Transmetropolitan, the comic? Yeah. Well, they introduced a concept in that, in one comic where you basically just took a pill and then uh, you saw a phone keypad overlaid over your hand and you just talked with your thumb and little finger. Okay, they have gloves that do that and you look like a fucking moron. Okay. I don't know, that may be one of those things where it changes, like the shame factor changes one day. And we're well, if you had to man. wear it all the time, it might look like a ponce. It's, it's the Google Glass problem. <laughs> they bring out a Google Glass that didn't look like you were wearing Google Glass, I might consider <laughs> yeah. getting one. Uh, Google Glass that won't have people make fun of me. But then you can secretly take photos of people's skirts. That's honestly, that is just going to be a massive issue of the future, is the ability to capture images is going to get easier and easier and smaller and smaller. And, and it's a sticking point, isn't it? Yeah, I think we're just going to have to cope. I don't think there's a way of enforcing it. Well, I was reading a book this week. It's Maybe this could be my culture How corner. How dare you read? I was reading a book called The Atrocity Archives by Charles Stross. Cool. It's a part of a sort of postmodern Lovecraftian concept where there's this secret government organization that, you know, protects the world from Lovecraftian things, but it treats magic uh, the way, like, an uh, IT geek treats it. Like, referring to things in terms of... Uh, you know. Did you try setting and turning your demon off and on again? Yeah, just treating like basically magic is computer programming. Well, yeah, and, that's and the main, a good analogy for it. I and the main character is this sort of detective, come I IT nerd <laughs> who sorts stuff out. And the story I just the, there's like a number of different stories in the book. The last one in the book that I read was this concept that uh, a, a group of terrorists had developed a way to emulate the the basilisk site, and then patch it into every security camera in the country so they can like carbonize people who fall into the view of a security camera that is a bit of a problem and it and it, yeah i mean once uh, they realized they had that power they realized there are very few places you can go where you would not be at risk from such a thing especially in the uk which has something like 12 percent of all the world's security cameras <laughs> doesn't really trust its own people much so this is what I mean, there are two ways to control a population, force them to do what you want, or convince them to do what you want, and I think that the, uh, the former may seem easier, but the latter works better in the long run. Yes, the book, uh, got a bit, you know, densely technical at times, but I quite liked it. I don't mind a bit of that in, you know... Those faces in the background remind me of that old Nickelodeon game show, like Secrets of the Hidden Temple. Reminds me of Knightmare. I don't know if those snakes do anything, or if I just haven't hit them right. The uh, snakes. I presume they hurt you. Yeah. Well, I don't think there's much in this game that's not, like, you know, out to kill me. Where do they find all these guys? The overcrowded prison populations of the future? Well, uh... Oh, yeah, mate. Fuck you. I you wonder how they're check. persuaded into this. Um, do this or we'll murder your family. Maybe they're clones. Well, there was a story that, uh, that was told on QI about this, uh... Shit. Historical army who intimidated their enemy by having the first rank of their soldiers walk up and chop their own heads off. Okay. Oh, yeah, all, I think I've heard of that lot, all of, They were all condemned criminals who'd been told, do this or we murder your family. 
And, you know, they did this as an intimidation tactic to say, hey, our soldiers will do yeah. this if we tell them to. What the fuck do you think they're going to do to you? Kiss me? Uh, Apparently it worked. Yeah, well, that's, you know, back back, back in those days, wars I mean, were won on, like, just scaring, like, if you're, if yeah, you're showing up and a, showing away, up, that was it. Showing up on the back of an elephant, if you're... You know, your population has never, never seen, seen an elephant, elephant. before. <laughs> that would be a bit of a surprise. Like, oh my god, they've got fucking monsters. <laughs> Why don't we get war monsters? This isn't fair, this isn't gonna work, I can't win this. I was playing Valiant Hearts, like the uh, game that uh, tells the story of the First World War. Cool. And uh, it, apparently when tanks were first introduced in the First World War, they had a very similar effect. Because they'd never been used before in warfare. Because huh. because the the whole First World War happened, there was a massive technological leap in terms of weapons of war. Mm. And when tanks were introduced, the people were like, "Shit, what the fuck's that? It's gonna come and kill us!" Can't beat that. It's made of metal. Didn't take long to figure out. You could just chuck a grenade under the treads. <laughs> but the uh, uh, same thing happened with, with elephants. Actually, didn't they were used against the Roman Empire, and they were scared yeah. at first. But uh, it didn't take long to figure out that elephants scare pretty easily. Yeah, and also, you, um, war elephants can't tell the difference between, um, you know, Hannibal soldiers and Romans. Yeah, well, That's, the, that, that used to happen a lot. The elephants would go, like, batshit and just just tear through everybody. Yeah, what the Romans used to do was uh, they'd just put their pikemen... What they'd do is they'd, their infantry would just separate, and they'd allow the elephants into the pikemen at the back, and the elephants would go, shit, pikes, and then stampede in the opposite direction and crush Hannibal's army instead. Mm. Although, I think, by, by the time Hannibal got across the, um, the Alps, he, I think he only had, like, one elephant left. The Romans did well because they were a notoriously adaptable force. And there organized. Was, there was a there was another story from around that time where the Romans were attacking on enemy territory that was very swampy. And the enemy were used to it, but the Romans weren't, so the Romans had an issue. So you know what they did? Mm. The Romans flat out invented the concept of stilts. <laughs> Okay, I know you mean probably just like little wooden things for them to stand on in the swamp, but in my mind they're like five foot tall, tall sort of Roman stilt soldiers marching through. Yeah. Just, Four Caesar! <laughs> yeah, it made exactly that noise. Yeah. They were using hydraulics. <coughs> yeah. They uh, invented steam. hydraulics as well. Well, hydraulics did exist back then, it's just nobody really sort of cottoned on how to. They, do meant, they invented it. hydraulic power armor. <laughs> in my with one cool of them. original alternate history book that no one's ever had the same idea as. It was made of brass and it had one of them Roman helmets with the little punk mohawk thing on the top. Oh, you said the name of that. Oh. A brush. A brush. A brush stuck to the top of his dumb head. Rome was an interesting, ancient Rome was an interesting place. Fun place. What, place. Is, what exactly is the goal of Smash TV? Just get to the end. Yep. Okay. Video games in the old days. Video games in 1990, man. What do you do? Go to the end. And what's the How big... do I do that? Kill all the dudes. And what's the big prize? Um, you live. Bingo! So... Bingo! I love it. So are you a condemned criminal? Um, I don't... Honestly, with the smiles, I think he's like a... No, a he willing... seems really into this. Yeah. I think he just really wanted to kill, like, a hundred thousand clones. Makes me think of uh, the film version of Battle Royale, where they talk about the psycho guys and say he's the guy who volunteered. Yeah. Battle Royale is a that, great that's film. What, that's Sequel's what you, retarded, but Battle Royale is a great film. That's what you are. You you are the guy who volunteered. You're the craziest, nuttiest nut bar in the fucking place. Saddest, loneliest tit. Anyway. Well, we had a couple of other topics. Oh, uh, yeah. Fox News used, um... Yes. Bioshock logo. Fox News, <laughs> with absolutely zero irony, Just used something that looked exactly like the Bioshock Infinite logo as a logo for their... I don't even know what it is. Some kind of uh... it was a ridiculous like okay like news news logos are just dangerously hi dangerous hype machines. They want to create a hype train for racism, basically. You wonder if Fox News is just full of Stephen Colbert contemporaries who have just gone <laughs> so many levels deep they don't even know where they are anymore. Just lost. They're just, just lost the, now. You know, defending our borders. It, it was they, it was something like they that. Were it even, was something. They were flat out <clears> using it. As the part of the anti-immigration conversation that's yeah. been going on in America, so they lately. use a logo about a game of a flying racist fortress. Yes. <laughs> it's just like, oh, that's delightful. Yes. I mean, the graphics, does, you know, the graphics department could have done that as a, as a lark. Possibly. I mean, someone very disgruntled, maybe. It happens, man. You know, it's never a smart idea to burn your bridges. 
I don't know, man. I'm, uh, but I'm sure that at least one person in the company somewhere should have pointed out. Maybe well, they explained. They didn't like that. You know, Maybe they explained did. the plot, and Fox News didn't realise which party was supposed to be the unsympathetic one yeah. in, that, in the description of the game story. <laughs> Hey, those guys sound like they're really on top of things. Glenn Beck's actually attempting to build one right now. They worship the Founding Fathers like, as if they're gods? <laughs> Check. Which they are, because America! They're, uh... uh they ghettoize all racial minorities, but enslave them at the same time. That was a great moment, like that start where it's just like, this is, this is about to get really racist, isn't it? It's just like, Jesus. You know, that's... I mean, you know I, I really like Bioshock Infinite. Let's not get into that it again. It was my most hated game of 2013, I think, if uh, you'll recall correctly. <sighs> you know, it's not that so much, it's just your... You, the comment you followed it up with that Tomb Raider was better. No, I didn't say that. You said, what would be your game of the year after I specifically said a million times I don't want a game of the year? Well, perhaps I should have clarified then yes. and asked what was the game you enjoyed playing the most in the course of that year? Uh, Super Street Fighter 4 Arcade Edition. Okay then, why didn't you say that at the time? We, again, we had a second comment... Alright, did you see that? It walked me in and then activated me on an enemy. Fuck you, player! Give us some money! No, because, again, like, we had a discussion about how oh, one's person, you know, if no, you no, ask no, no, I think favorite... you were the only one having that discussion. <coughs> I was just asking what the, your favorite mm. game was, and I used that with the phrase Game of the Year, yeah. and you sort of reinterpreted the whole concept. No, because Game of the Year is different to what my favorite game is. If you ask someone what I their don't... favorite movie is, it's very different to what they may think is the best made movie. I, I don't. Do you think Game of the Year is some kind of objective truth? I'm saying Game of the Year is is, is who, whatever your favorite game was that year. No, because we why were talking, is this not? We were talking about it in the frame of something being nominated Game of the Year, like that was. The I discussion. was asking what you would nominate as Game of the Year. Yeah, and Game of the Year is not the same as my favorite game. You just ask what my favorite game is. They're different things. Fucking shit, bullets. I I don't know what you're getting at here. Uh, of course, game of the year means what your favorite game was that year. No, it doesn't. It's yes. like the difference between what your favorite movie was of the year and what won the Oscar. I feel like I'm in hell. So do I. I'm having to explain something really fucking simple to you. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? I must. The question was. Oh, They're different god. things. They are different things. Oh god, oh god, oh god. This is something entirely created in your mind. No, it isn't. Game of the year and what your favorite game is are different things. When I'm just, in... just... Game of... <clears throat> your game of the year and what your favorite game was that year are two different things. That was... That yes. is a sentence that came out of your mouth. I just... I'm gonna write that down and I want you to read that and try to figure out why I think you're fucking nuts. Again, I've explained this and you just don't listen. I did fucking listen! <laughs> no, I know yeah. what you mean! No, you don't. I know exactly what you mean! Then how you are were you were equating... <laughs> because you're a fucking mad. You're a fucking madman. <laughs> I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. YouTube comments will complete this argument for me. <laughs> I just don't understand why you take the position that your game of the year is a different thing to your f the favorite game you enjoyed playing the most that year. Because it was in the structure of a discussion of what was described as an objective game of the year. <laughs> okay, that's, that's a simple answer. That's a really simple, those are words you can understand. <laughs> And in your mind, this is just me being stupid, isn't it? Well, it God. is you being stupid. It is you being stupid. You don't God. understand the simple thing. How the frame of the conversation affects how we were talking, you know, what we were discussing precisely. There's a, you know, the difference. <laughs> Let's just move on. Let's talk about psychedelic mushrooms. I have taken them. I haven't. Well, that explains a lot. Well, what, this was a story this week that, for some reason, you wanted to talk about, so do you want to take this? Um, yeah, well, I, well, for some reason it was on Escapist, so I count that as video game news we can talk about. I don't know, why was the Escapist talking about psychedelic mushrooms? I don't know. Well, Just, no. I don't know, maybe they thought it would be Does interesting. It come under their, do they do regular news? I don't know. I don't they, do, they do everything. Oh, okay. They do whatever they think will pass the time. In other words, they do whatever they think will act as escapism. 
Fair enough. I and suppose mushrooms fall under the you category go. of escapism quite that's, well. That's well, I mean, I wouldn't use them as that. I don't think mushrooms are a good escapist drug. That's They're the, a learning tool. That's the clearest definition of escapism there is, really. Well, yeah, Taking again, recreational I, drugs. Well, uh, again, I, mushrooms, I wouldn't... You shouldn't treat mushrooms as recreational or escapism because they're well, this fucking is the, intense. Well, this is the thing. This is getting away from recreation because the story was that psychedelic mushrooms might be able to uh, might be used to treat anxiety and depression. Yes, yes, they 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 can help. They help me a lot. Um, the uh, neuropharmacology of it's quite interesting. Like the, the you know, um, I've read an awful lot also about uh, the use of MDMA as a treatment of uh, PTSD that's been really effective. Um, mm. A lot of uh, things by people who really, really, and I mean like major grade soldier PTSD. Like yes. can't hear a pop without you know being back in Afghanistan PTSD. And of course, uh, cocaine is a great treatment for having too much money. <laughs> yeah. Cocaine is a great example, and I, I will give prohibition this. If cocaine wasn't as actively prohibited in Australia as it was, I would have had a massive cocaine problem. Like, if it was as easy, easy to get in, like, the UK or the States or something, oh, uh, that'd have been trouble. Because the problem is you can take it and function rather well on it for a while. Yeah. Before it starts to. Have you taken it? Yes. Me too. I've done more or less everything except injected heroin. See, I've never taken hallucinogenic drugs, and that's the thing I've always wanted to try, because... Uh, uh, some of great creators throughout history have been greatly inspired by them. Well, I mean, here's the thing. They're tough to recommend because they can also be fucking unpleasant. Like, I have had well, that, well, monstrously, nightmarishly bad trips. Like, the first time I, I ever took mushrooms, they were cooked. I don't mind. I like horror games. Okay, yeah. You I mean, don't like this. Does, trip hat doesn't have to be nice to inspire the creative juices. Yeah, that's like... You, you could get a great story about, you know, being abducted by, like, you know... Syrian terrorists and tortured. Like, that doesn't mean you want to go through it. I mean, I'd probably have a really nice trip where I just ride rainbows through well, the forest like, on a unicorn while eating cake, and I wake up and think, I can't do shit with that. <laughs> you may do. Like, that's the thing. It's, 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 it's not... Mushrooms particularly, like Silas Hyman mushrooms, aren't just... They aren't cut and dry. Generally, how you go into it is going to affect it an awful lot. I recommend, like... First of all, don't go out. Like, don't take mushrooms and go out. That's retarded. Um, yes, I've heard, uh, don't go out and also have a buddy there. A buddy is useful if you've never done them. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't be alone is another big one. Um, don't taking go it with out, someone's usually good. Don't go out, but don't go alone. I'm getting mixed messages here. Well, yeah, have someone come over to your house. Like you want to be somewhere familiar. I kind of would like to see that, actually. Yeah, you come over and watch me take some drugs. I'd recommend maybe about five. Okay, so because here's... I took them cooked first, and cooking modifies the actual active ingredient and changes it and changes how the trip works. So I thought I took a uncooked amount of classic Queensland gold top blues, thinking that they had to work like a cooked amount. And I wound up at the age of 16 just sitting by myself and eating 25. Give or take. Smart. Yeah. Were, okay, you making first, a ris were you making a risotto? The first, no, I just fucking wolf the things down. They taste like fucking ass. You'll need like a can of coke or something to get through them. But, um, okay, so, the first four hours... How do you know what ass tastes like? Uh, you know, sometimes your tongue slips. Um, the what, first... What, while you're, uh, uh, affectionately, affectionately treating somebody's balls? <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, it's balls. Um, the first four hours were fun. And okay. then... I realized it was still coming on, and that I wasn't prepared for. I'd smoked a lot of weed, and made the sort of full mistake of thinking that the two might be comparable, and at first they kind of sort of almost are. So it's like having an orgasm, but uh, then black stuff comes out. No, see the thing is, it destroys bits of your fucking ego barrier, so you forget, you start thinking, but you're not you. And you, your ability to discern the difference between you physically and the objects you are touching starts to collapse. The ability to differentiate yourself from the rest of the universe starts to fuck up. And that's insane. I went outside, because like, after about five hours, I'm like, I need something to entertain myself. I need something to take my mind off this, because it's just too intense. I had a conversation with the brick wall. This sounds like fun so far. Oh yeah, no, it's, 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 it, at, at this point, it was still fun. But I was getting kind of bored, and it was really intense, and was I was there, starting to get a bit nervous. I can't so, imagine you'd have much in common to talk about with the brick wall. Oh, well, wait. 
The brick wall asked me um, how it was, which is actually a very common thing when you're taking a psilocybin. And something will ask you, how is it? And I'm like, yeah, it's, it's, it's different to what I expected. And I went outside and it was just kind of a little bit before twilight, you know, where the, light, the light's really clear but not bright. And I looked up. Now that was a mistake. Because I looked up and could see a star, like, you know, just way off in the distance, like, you know, the distance, the fucking, you know, stellar distance. So I could see a star. And then the reality of what that star was and what that star meant to my place in the universe all hit at once, without any of the usual ego shit you have to protect you from those thoughts. And suddenly the entire scale of the universe was just completely thrust into my fucking brain. And I realized, like, I just saw it, I was just like, holy sweet fucking Jesus. Everything you care about, everything you love, everything you hate is tiny, and you are small, and oh, the universe you, is big. You went into a total perspective vortex. Yep. Hitchhiker's Guide yep. reference. <laughs> That's exactly what it is, and... But from the way you're describing it, it's making me think of an experience I had with World of Warcraft. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah, you have your little contemptible laugh before I even had a chance to explain myself. No, I, I, this it's, is how no, you I, operate, it's, it's, it's contemptible it? because it's particularly because it's World of Warcraft and you've been grim toward World of Warcraft on a variety of occasions and oh, now I, you're just well, going to pop up and describe World of Warcraft in the same... Well, you know, World you know, of Warcraft <laughs> World of Warcraft is a kind of a shitty way to spend the fifth and three months. But um, it's I've been personally not my kind of game, but that's not. I've been playing for a value. while. It was doing the thing where it just rewards you and uh, punishes you to, in such a way as to get you hooked. <laughs> and I was playing it sort of mindlessly for a while, and uh, and I was killed by something, and I found myself in the dead world of World of Warcraft, where everything's all ghosty and white, and you just have Ooh. to run back to your corpse. And then for some reason, I'm not sure why, because there's never really any reason to do this, I looked up. Mm. I looked directly upwards while I was in the middle of the plane. And what I saw was that there was a massive spiraling, swirling vortex taking up the entire sky. Cool. And it wasn't what I was expecting. And I guess I might have been pretty tired, because I felt suddenly struck by it and intimidated. And in it's... that moment, I had the first planted seed in my mind for Mogworld. I was like... Oh, oh, I was like, I'm a tiny thing. I am a tiny thing in the middle of a massive f clusterfuck I don't understand. Yeah. And... and That's an important realisation. it's only once I've entered the dead world and seen this thing in the sky that I'm now getting a hint of the sheer enormity of what's around me. Okay, imagine that, but you're in the game. Like, I was no, in the game. No, 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 no. You're not playing a game. You're the game. Imagine imagine okay. being your character and realizing that you were in a game, and then imagine that happening to you, Ben Croshaw. Well, that's what, that was the essence of Mog World, since you mentioned it. Yeah, but I, uh, just, uh, the, 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 ex the actual experience is... <coughs> it can be quite terrifying. I've also had amazing fun <coughs> on mushrooms. Because again, they... God damn it. Do you want to just have a big cough? <coughs> oh, oh. Did something come out of your mouth? Huh? No. I just saw a little white speck come out of your mouth when you did that. I don't know, nothing came out of my mouth. Maybe I was Probably just... Probably all that your dick I was sucking Maybe out. it was just out of the corner of my eye and yeah. things were playing tricks. Um... Are you done? No, I'm fighting two snakes. Is, um, all, is all that uh, rant phlegm out of your throat now? What? Am I hurting these? Oops. Do you well, think things are flashing wide. Yeah, see, they? that's what I thought, but I think I might actually just have to be hit, like, I think that might mean I'm not hitting them right. I think I might have to be hitting them in the fucking head. Well, so this entire time I've been doing nothing. Well, their heads uh, acquire electricity a bit. Yeah, I think... When you shoot them in the head, they sort of fizzle a bit. I think I've been, I think I've been wasting time here. Um, Possibly. But yeah, I've also had amazing fun. And again, I wouldn't use them as escapism because there's nothing to us. You lose yourself to such a degree that the escapism is... Oh, you won. Yeah, it's like, I again, they're, they're not what I describe as a good escapist drug because looks they are like, intense. Looks like this room has been dehydrated. Yeah! Because it's, you know, it's had a hydra removed from it. <laughs> was that a hydra? I think that was just two separate things. I think it was part of a hydra. Okay. The other heads were all chilling out backstage in the green room. <laughs> so what do you think Dale's gonna do? How do you think he's gonna do? Having a coke and uh, <laughs> a biscuit. Um, but yeah, like I... 
It's one of those things where, like, I mean, if you have any history of, like, psychological imbalance, maybe don't. Um, but then I had a history of psychological imbalance and I think it helped me greatly, so, uh, It's one of those things where it's difficult to recommend because of the intensity of it. Like, I can say, try weed. Like, that's, you know, that's no big deal. I've only done weed once. I've done cocaine more times than I've done weed, and I haven't done cocaine very often. I can't imagine you on weed. I just, you slower would be... Just, I don't know, I just can't sort of fathom that. Well, possibly just sleep here. Yeah, that's too. Well, you want cocaine? I wouldn't mind seeing. Well, someone passed me a joint once when I lived in a share house, and I inhaled too much and choked because I. This was even before I smoked a cigarette, so I probably didn't get the effect. No, you will. If 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 you inhale and get it in your lungs, you'll get something. Well, I don't remember much. That's that's probably a good sign. I don't know. I kind of want to see that now. I like the idea of you being giggly. That would just tickle me. I get giggly. It's when you talk about booby booby bum bum. Remember? <laughs> so bizarre. So funny. You and your little booby bum bum things. Yes, yes, just the once, and let's not forget I was very tired at the time. No, the there, ha there have been a few other instances, like not re un unrecorded instances, where you've sort of just giggled at just funny, silly little things like that. Yes, yes, we've established that. It's just, I, I like, think it's cute. I think it's funny. It's, I like it's, it's, visceral. It's to see the, uh, I like visceral humor that yeah. sort of cuts through the, the, the language barrier. Testies. That, d that doesn't work. No. Testes is too clinical a word. See, I find the bollocks. clinical ones... Now, bollocks is a perfect word. I find, like, sort of inappropriate use of the clinical ones, like, can be quite funny. Like, I think that jars them, you know, sort of shifts them a little I bit. don't know. It always smacks of trying too hard to me. Yeah, see, I don't know. You really like bottom, though, and I find bottom probably the more laboured of their works. That's the, that's the beauty of it. It gets tiring. I mean, I kind of like the live shows better because there's much more of a self-awareness to it, to the, uh, to the excessive vis visceralness. I don't know. It's like, like when they accident- sort of... like the moments when they accidentally hit each other for real and then, like, apologize for two minutes. Don't apologize, just fucking take it. You're doing a live show, you pretend to hit each other, just- It's funny. They're pretty good at, um, miming hits without actually hitting each other. To their credit, they actually are. They're better than a lot of wrestlers. Yes. And that's like their job. Yeah. So it uh, says it all, really, doesn't it? Failed at stage work? Become a professional wrestler! <laughs> Even people with no brain at all will get by. Uh, there has to be a place for the brainless. Places for the placeless. If that, f if you fail even that, consider MMA. <laughs> Dude, MMA is like, you know, it like you're actually getting hit there. Yeah, but no great loss, right? You should, like, re listen to Baz Rutten. He's, like, the, one of the oldest statesmen of MMA, and he's actually quite funny and clued in. Well, I imagine he got out while the getting was good, then, before he got massive brain damage or anything. Well, see, the good thing about MMA is, um, unlike boxing, it's not just all blows to the head. Like, well, you no. can do a lot of ground, you can do a lot of submissions. Hence, hence the mixed part of mixed martial arts. Yeah, but, I mean, like, boxing with the gloves is what gives you, like, repeated sort of concussions over, you know, many things. Yeah, because, uh... Uh, Newton's, uh, whatever it is, law, every action is the opposite of reaction. If you're not wearing the gloves, any pain you visit upon a face will be visited equally on your fist. Well, okay, this is why I like bare knuckle, is because the gloves just make it safe for your fist. They don't make it safe for your brain. Like, getting hit in the head like that rattles it around really bad, and that's where, that's why, yes. like, um, American football has bigger problems with, um, concussion syndrome than, say, Australian, because you don't really, you, you don't have the armor. So you actually have to modify how hard you tackle a person and where you tackle a person based around what will actually hurt you. And that's a natural limiter to the sort of damage you can do. Whereas because of the helmets and the armor, you can just run into people like a fucking freight train. And they do, and it's impressive to watch, but it really, it's, it's, been t it's terrible for people. <laughs> like, it's Perhaps not good. Uh, we should just give all kids helmets and let them work it out of their system before they join <laughs> the real world. Well, I mean, I, you know, there's a, there's a big and a healthy place for, you know, contact and combat sports, and, again, I, I think, you know, the UFC does a really good job of keeping it relatively safe. You know, no one's really fucking died in it, you know, that I can think of off the top of my head, you know, major injuries are relatively sort of... It's funny it, how, uh, pro wrestling sometimes seems less safe. Because, um, because yeah, well, it's like the ballet thing. People put themselves through massive physical trauma for the sake of a show. Yeah. Whereas MMA is actually a sport. 
Yeah, and it's funny because people, it's it's because people know the pain is real in MMA that they sort of go, all right, I, I have to tap or my arm's gonna break. Yeah. Whereas in wrestling, it's like must put show on, and then they just keep going. It's really, show must go yeah. on. Show must go on. Whereas, yeah, yeah, because I think MMA, it's just like this is me. This is me possibly getting hurt. I don't owe yes. the fans fucking shit. You know, I gotta fucking, I gotta tap. I gotta stop. Although there are some sort of like budget outfits and Russia lately has been doing just some horrible things like MMA that's like five on five. Well, if you ever lived through a Siberian winter. Which is such a bad idea and I mean don't get me wrong it makes for some fun YouTube clips but people are going to get really hurt. What was that story about the Cambodian Midget Wrestling League? Well, that's they... great. No, there are, some, there are some great Midget Wrestling Leagues and here's the great thing about Midget Wrestling. Um, you know ladder matches where they get on a ladder? Two midget dudes on a fucking regular sized ladder is some of the most heart stoppingly tense shit you'll ever watch because it looks like they're gonna fall for miles. It's great. Uh, uh, do they prefer midget or dwarf or is it just little person now? See, I don't know. I think this gets to like what's the intent going into it. I want to call you whichever one is the one that won't upset you, so can you just take it as red that I mean no fucking offense? Like, yeah, I always think little person sounds a bit patronizing. Condescending, yeah. yeah. Like it is like, oh, you're a little fucking person. So, like, I'm yes. just. I don't why don't know, like... Why don't we just pat you on the head yeah, and that give you a lollipop? Yeah, really demeaning. Like, and again, like, I figure, like, if I was in any kind of circumstance, like, if I was in a wheelchair and that could fucking happen, I don't give a shit if you call me a fucking cripple or a fucking wheelchair bound. I don't give a shit. Maybe like, it's not gonna, you know, all the, all the euphemisms in the world aren't gonna undo what's happened. Maybe it's the person part of little person that's the operative word there. Hmm. Well, I mean, like, Peter Dinklage called... uses dwarf an awful lot, like, outside of, you know, Game of Thrones, so I don't know. Well, I you know, maybe, maybe people do sort of perceive dwarf as separate species because they watch too much Tolkien or something. <laughs> yeah, I think if, if, if you manage to perceive, like, a human being dwarf as a separate species, that's probably a problem beyond, like, the nomenclature that you're using. Like, Yeah, that's the thing that just struck me out of nowhere the other day. Like, um, Game of Thrones is a fantasy world with dwarves. Except... Realistic right, regular. Well, I mean, dwarfism, and I think I, I think they're actually different conditions. If I, if memory serves, like I think dwarfism. Well, there's various different conditions. I think um, like the condition Peter Dinklage has is different to the condition Warwick Davis has. Say. Yeah, yeah. I think the I think one's dwarfism, one's. I remember like, hearing uh, Warwick Davis actually has a fairly rare one. Yeah. I wonder what the difference is. Um, yeah, I don't know. Well, look Come on, chime in. If there's a dwarf on who follows us on Twitter, then I'm we'll sure Wikipedia will reflect us now. Uh, I mean, at the, and again, at the end of the day, what's you know, what's the classification really fucking you know relevant? Well, this game really hasn't updated at all in this whole time we've been talking over it, has it? It's okay. This game is less than a meg. I mean, are you near the end now? I don't know. Probably not, actually. I mean, you're in the sort of. Well, it looks like the you know, the final mansion sort of environment. I think I actually might be... I think there's four worlds, I'm not sure. And it is an arcade game, which yeah, it can't go to be so shorter. Long. Well, it, also, it's 709k. So how much money have you spent on it at this point? Mental. On what? On uh, putting quarters into this emulated version of the oh, game. Oh, How many times. virtual quarters have you spent? Probably and, at least uh, about $30. And how many weeks of rent would it have paid? Um, well, I don't know, I didn't, I was, you know, I was seven when this came out. It wasn't really rent to pay considerations then, it was basically just what I yeah, could get out of my parents. Which was not a lot, because, you know, we were poor. Just living off your parents like a little scummy leech. But, um, this was released on the SNES, which was a lot of fun, because then me and my brother could play it, and we did. And that was an enjoyable afternoon. Did it have a live system in it? Um, yes, but they weren't linked, and I think it had limited credits, this NES version memory serves, because, you know, if you don't have to pay, and there's no credit limitation, the game kind of becomes meaningless. But I think basically there was, like, Easy, which would have, like, 15 credits, and, you know, then up to Hard, which would have, like, 7 or something. And Have you played The Binding of Isaac? Uh, yes, only a little bit, though. I think I only just recently got it on Steam. It's like Smash TV through the, uh, through the lens of, say, Jonan Vasquez. <laughs> I like him. He's funny on Twitter. You should do more stuff on Twitter. I'm always disappointed that you don't. Well, you have like, what, 90,000 followers? Why? Why do you follow Yahtzee? Because all he ever does is go, here's a thing I'm doing. And then he doesn't offer an observation. He doesn't do anything well, funny. Well, sometimes I do. If I think, well, Twitter I use for putting out the latest thing I've done. Yeah. Which I, I like to think a lot of my Twitter followers appreciate. Uh, I'm not saying no. I'm not saying that's um, useless in itself. I'm saying you could be doing a lot more with that medium. And if I think of a funny line that I can't really use anywhere else, I'll put it on there. I mean, uh, I sort of, I do have a tendency to second guess myself a lot these days, though. Like this morning, like it's um, Twitter, dude. Like, like this morning, it suddenly occurred to me that uh, 
there's a line in Half-Life 2 Episode 2 where the G-Man says to... Uh, G-Man! The G-Man says to Alex Vance to pass on to Eli Vance, prepare for unforeseen consequences. And I was like, wait a minute, you yeah, can't prepare for unforeseen <laughs> consequences because that's what unforeseen means. Expect the unexpected. And I was about to tweet that, but then I thought, no, nah, that, that, that makes you, just makes me look kind of dumb. All 90,000 of your Twitter followers would have loved that. Well, the that's ones what Twitter's for. Like, I like, I like no, no, the no, 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 observations. No, no, no. The ones that would, the, the ones that replied would have. Other people would probably have just thought that was lame and unfollow without sending, without messaging me anything. So, so Does that I, hurt your I think people unfollow you. Like the trouble with a lot of internet video <coughs> and content creators is that they worry too much about the vocal commenters and not the silent <coughs> ones. Well, no, but I mean that the same. Go the vocal commenters positive or negative. That's why I don't really bother reading the YouTube comments because even the ones who say, "Hey, Gabriel's nice," that could be like a brief moment of lucidity between ship flinging sessions. I mean, what so it is, what's the point? I mean, like, watched, you have to do it for yourself. I've watched so many internet reviewers that fall into the trap of trying to make themselves into a wacky character. Yeah, that's... They, they, do, they do skits. I mean, if you're not Red Letter Media, maybe try to avoid doing skits. Well, even though I don't like the Red Letter Media skits. Because when you yeah, do skits... Yeah, you kill prostitutes, we get it. When you do skits, what will happen is... The people who came... What the fuck? I'm winning women! Oh, you won <laughs> all the women. Yes. What's a I get mating rights in this bleak future world. I think they just blow up dolls. Ah, same diff. This is really uh, backward, politically correct. That's wise. But yeah, as I was saying, there's a lot going on here at the moment. There's a, there's a lot of interpretations you could read into this. I've seen so many internet reviewers where they re where they like uh, they they do reviews and they have good points and then they and they make jokes in their reviews, but then they do skits. It's, and then what always happens is that their their bottom licky fans who do the, who like post all the comments on the on and post on all the forums say, "Ooh, a great skit, a great uh, introduction of uh, character X that you made up. We should, we'd like to see more of him." Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, love Botty Licky. And meanwhile, there's like a huge proportion of silent viewers who watched it because they liked the review and when you start doing skit 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 they will get they will go oh this gets really embarrassing skit, turn skit, off skit, 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 and the vast majority of them won't post anything they won't dislike they'll just quietly stop watching because that's what the vast majority of viewers do it's the people who try to get involved who are the freaks god yeah isn't your little review character a, a, a character well, We've had this conversation. But I don't do skits. <coughs> I don't do. I don't make well, a I'd little. Say I, I almost think the zero punctuation reviews are themselves a skit. No, there's, they're like a. There's, there's a review going on throughout it. But yeah, but they're, you know, they're they're, sometimes there's yeah. funny imagery, but there's not. I, there's never like a. Oh. I don't do like little side stories. No. Where, well, that's brevity is I think your. Where I showed them having little. Feature, where they have showed them having little adventures or something, and do little skit jokes. Sometimes I'll do like. A little skit-like thing, but not using those characters, like where I um, replace the dialogue in an intro sequence. Well, but you're I, shooting eyeballs at me. But I do that really because I've because uh, I only do that when I think of a funny idea. Like I did, like I did a video of the start of Half Life, but replaced the the radio announcement voice on the train with the voice of a like put upon morning DJ. <laughs> complaining about complaining about how many people request I am a scientist by the Dandy Warhols. I love that I love it line. <laughs> I love it! I love all the digitized This I is like seven hundred K and they've got like digitized voice. Good on you guys. I love the fact that you're blowing up my string vest. <laughs> Alright, kind of. Yeah, if you look at if you look at a YouTube a video, heard them. if you look at a YouTube video, you look at the number of comments versus the number of views. You'll realise that commenters uh, are by their very nature in a minority. I find commenting weird anyway. Like, I mean, again, like I get. I'm not going to say that it, you're wrong to do it, but I find it like who sees something with like 700 comments and decides, oh, I'll I'll, I'll add to that. Like, yeah. This always seems strange to me. Like I, I'm again. I, I suppose I'm a weird shut-in, so I find interacting generally just probably a bit pointless. But no, I agree. I, I don't. I, I think internet comments are kind of the blight of Web 2.0. I mean, I, I'm sort of okay with it under like an article if you just want to discuss the points raised. Yeah, but I mean, how many, just... how many of those are actually discussing the points raised and not going off into hyperbolic fucking, you know? But rants. I always, when I'm watching a YouTube video, I always push the comments off the screen as the first opportunity because the 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 first one, the like the highest upvoted one, is almost invariably uh, a direct quote of the funniest joke in the video, which immediately <laughs> spoils it. 
He certainly does love it. I do not. Did you just do something? Oops. Oh, yes. I accidentally clicked outside the window there. Thanks, Yachts! Oh, what are you complaining about? Yachts is helping. You got infinite lives. So is this the final boss? Yeah. Good timing! We're no like, we're worry! Like, we're like, uh, at the end of the one hour and a bit we usually do. Take that, nefarious evil Larry Emder. Now his head has floated off to go and be the new Max Headroom somewhere. <laughs> I miss Max Headroom. Well, I mean, you know... Presents! This is better. I mean, yeah. obviously taking all that women was a trap. This is the real prize. Well, again, I think, you know, the fact that the <coughs> women were obviously tiny fetish constructs, I think, exemplifies um, a critique of yes. the masculine objectification of women as a goal. Now you got to carry 500 presents and 500 cardboard cutouts of women. So. Yeah, that's all it is, a cardboard cutouts to make you feel bad about yourself. And take them home to your little post-apocalyptic slum where you live. Those are people, you jerk. Well, you can just flog them all to the brothel, I suppose. Post-apocalyptic world's a hard one. Mm-hmm. If only there was someone around doing stand-up comedy. Dude, you'd be a leather gimp. <laughs> yeah. Just clawing to the lead. I was, I was trying to find out what the origin of the word gimp was the other day. Good luck. So, have you won the game now? Looks like it. Yay, well done. Do you feel fulfilled? I have... Look how many editions of the home game I've won. That'll be useful. Have you ever wanted, like, 380,000 games of, you know, Scrabble? Yes, for I routinely hold, uh, tournaments for... Yes, two vast months. Scrabble tournaments. Consisting of 100,000 people. Oh, good meat. That's, that's important. Important to have good meat in this in the slum future. Yeah, well, you don't want radiation-infused meat. This must be a Soylent Green scenario. I need Soylent Green. I, I think we'll get to that point, maybe, if the population doesn't sort of... I, I've read something that the population is um, suggested to kind of... I imagine you'd feel differently if it was Soylent Green made from your dad. Why? Well, no. If he died and then they made Soylent Green out of him, okay. If they kicked his door down and made Soylent Green out of him while he was still kicking, not okay. Well, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Well, that, well that's that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about like just recycling of uh, human protein. Well, it makes sense. I mean, uh, we will all be one. I mean, all the uh, overpopulation solutions fail to factor into the disposal of bodies. I find like graveyards kind of a colossal waste of space. Like, I get it. But... Waste of good food as well. <laughs> People bits. <laughs> Um, I don't know, I just, I, I, there's, that is there's a, taboos around, like, That is know. a terrifying depiction of boobs, I'm just saying. <laughs> it's a terrifying depiction of femininity, period. That's nice 80s hair, though. Fantastic 80s hair. Uh, it's, again, it looks just like, a, look, again, it looks like the mat around a toilet. <laughs> just, just on the cusp of 90s. I guess that was just an 80s hair thing, they looked like the mat. Oh, was it feathering? I want to say feathering? I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not a hair person. I don't know. I get my, my hair my cut parents the, uh... just, When I was a kid in the 80s, my parents just made me get crew cuts all the time. <laughs> I didn't have a haircut till I was four, until my granddad convinced me to get a crew cut. Which was funny, because my, my mum was annoyed with that. I, I, I owe a lot of, like, because like, my parents were like kind of like weird freaks. And then my granddad was like, someone's got to make a man out of you. So he showed me, like, violent movies and stuff so like that. So I'll make a man out of you. <laughs> like, we used to watch, like, Charles Bronson revenge films and, like, anything that was right. all, like, what you want to see Robocop? Yeah. You're five? Yeah. Fuck it, let's go oh to the video store. God, I'm so frustrated. You sp spoke over the whole time the words Gay Ray were on the screen. <laughs> was that his name? I presume it must have been. Or was it like just, he was the gay Ray? Like, there were two Rays, so there had to be gay Ray. Actually, I think it was Ray Gay. Ray Gay. Actually, uh, yeah. Wait, What was it? You read it. I mean, you can't remember. That was like, what, like eight seconds ago? I can't Well, that's because you were distracting me. It was something gay. Gay Ray. You're gonna hit me with the gay Ray. That's how they recruit you. Yep, they're just gonna maintain this pose until the screen goes off them, and then she will go away and scrub herself where you touched her. Yes, very fitting. Well done. There you go, Yahtzee. There you can have your gay. Look, gay. Gay one. There was a... gardening program on the BBC that had the, an occasional contributor to it whose name was Gay Search. I just... I love that. It that's... was a more innocent time. I know, like, that's the thing. Like, just words and, you know, things change over the, the, the intervening years. And you're gonna be, you know... 
What if well, what if there's like the Yahtzee murderer, like someone who like goes around just beating people to death with like the Yahtzee board game? Well, well that will probably turn out to be me. <laughs> Clue number one. I, I, I hope this is played in court one day. <laughs> It'll probably turn out to be me. Did you have any closing thoughts for the viewers? This is the, uh, this is the demo now playing because yeah. you're, you're sitting back with your coffee. So yeah, I'm enjoying myself Fresh now. from your victory that it's requires... My, my triumph. Your 100 million lives requiring triumph. And Smash TV. Probably, any, I'm curious to see how many continues. I? What, what final things have you to say to the TV-watching audiences of Slum America, Gabe the Victor? Um, you know, watch out for marauders. Uh, pay your rent, otherwise Vinny will break your knees. <laughs> oh, the year's 1999, Yahtzee. And always, always buy that for a dollar. Fuck yeah. That was going to be my closing line, but now we have to watch this whole thing now, don't we? It's interesting. I can't even do a dramatic reading it's going by too fast the action takes place in front of a studio audience and is broadcast live by a satellite around the world be prepared the future is now you are the next lucky contestant <laughs> the future is what about 15 years ago yeah well uh, why don't you share stories about that lovely future you had listeners yeah oh. dream of a better future Good night. Thanks for clarifying. Continue. Um, yeah, so like, you can talk about like sort of cultural traits, because that's not... You know, I, I don't think that's involving anybody who isn't actually involved. You know what I mean? Like, if, you, if you're talking about a, a, a behavior, then you have to fulfill that behavior to be being the one talked about. And whereas I think the offense is in talking about someone as though they all participate in a behavior because of something that is... Can I stop is... you there? Because I don't know what you're on about. Could I request you do the stop, think, and then speak thing? I'm getting there. Okay, well, well let, let's do the uh, sum up your argument in less words that are in this sentence thing. Okay, well... Ten seconds. Oh, now I've got ten seconds. Is this killing your mind? They were right! TV's killing your mind! It is funny going back, like, I was thinking about Doctor Who the other day, like, early Doctor Who before the fucking Wait, internet ruined it. you mean there are times in your day when you're not thinking about Doctor Who? Believe it or not, yes. Ah, they put a life on a mine! Hey, jibs! Yeah, fucking jerks. Um... I wonder what the first game that had jibs was. I mean, I know John Romero claims to have invented the word. I not I, I have no information with which to argue that. Okay. So maybe maybe he does. I don't know. Do you think like you you you, you probably know a little. You're listening there. to the tangent hour. Well, that's what the opening of these usually is before we get into the topics. Well, well, I was hoping you'd continue the race argument so I could say something clever like, "Lucky we've got race sorted out. Shame about gender, eh?" <laughs> Because then we can talk about the Finnish Hearthstone tournament thing. That's hilarious for a lot of reasons. Like, one of my favorite things is insanity that makes regular insanity seem sane by comparison. Alright, can we uh, can we summarize the story before we analyze it, please? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, I thought... Well, that how, was, what that was pretty it? much a good summary. I mean, you can summarize it, because that was... Have, you brought have it we up. met our bicker quota yet? I'm not sure. Um, no. no, no. Anyway, do, do there was a... Quota? There was a Hearthstone tournament in Finland that raised a big old stink because uh, it was men only. Because well, there's... Would, would you like to explain this? This is really weird. Okay, yeah. See, I read probably a, a, a little more into it because, again, I just found it fascinating. And the thing I love about video games is once you add, like, you know, various you know, different controllers that people can get, it's really inclusive. I saw a thing about a kid who helped another kid who was blind to play through Ocarina of Time, and he managed to get through that with, like, assistance and instructions. You are still listening to the Tangent Hour. No, but this is what I mean, like, you know, video games are accessible, that's what's, you know, great about them. You don't have to be fit, you don't have to be healthy, like, you can, you can do lots of shit, you know, in video games. What did and I just say? So I said, can we summarize this story before we analyze it? Yeah, and that's the point, is like, well, you can go back to this discussion. Just explain the fine details of the, the what's going on with this tournament. All right. So they had a thing, it, basically. They had a, a Hearthstone tournament, and that's not a game I'm really familiar with. But you don't really need to be to sort of understand this thing. And they they put a gender divide in. And here's the yes. thing: it wasn't just a gender divide where it's like, okay, there's like Hearthstone men's and Hearthstone women's. Yes. The which, gender which is, divide... Which is in itself a bit dumb. Yeah, well, no, well, that's fucking retarded. Like, again, there is zero relevance gender plays in how you play like a well, fucking Well, the story I got told is that they felt they had to put that in because that's how they would feel like a real sport. Well, that doesn't make 
much sense. No, it makes no sense because it's not actually because it makes sense in a physical sport because there, yes. there's a different physical baseline from the gender. With a few exceptions, um, there's been some really. I'm, I'm really interested in now in um, female strength as it relates. Christ, what the hell did I drink last night? <laughs> Well, um, I, I don't know. What did you drink last night? You've actually been getting out on the town a lot lately. Uh, espresso martini and four straight rums, I think. <laughs> Yatsu Kroshaw, man about town. What the fuck's this? Oh, I just figured it out. This is history, history, history. I think big money, big prizes. I love it. I think you'll find it Smash TV. It's totally which, Smash TV. So which one's you and which one am I? Um, you're nobody. Although we could be playing this. Um... Guy on the right saying, look, there's the guy who took our shirts. <laughs> Give me my shirt back. It's cold. So this, um, based on the amazingly excellent Arnold Schwarzenegger film, Running Man. Really? I thought it was Total Recall. <laughs> so... And, you know, it's, it's 20, it's 20, what is it, 2014? We should be getting to Death Games. Oh, yawn. It's a dual joystick shooter. Well, like, yeah, we don't have enough of those these days. Well, <laughs> yeah, that's... This huh. is the John Carter of dual joystick shooters, okay? This is important, you need to see this. This is history. Wait, so it was really expensive and shit and nobody watched it? Um, no, it was the first one and everyone, you know, if you look at this, I think know it's what you meant. <laughs> Fucking hell. I was talking for the audience, you ring. Well, even they aren't that thick. <laughs> Listen, I know. You were probably an intellectual powerhouse in whatever bogan shit ass school you went to. But Good now man. you're in the real nice. world, you have to talk to people of equal intelligence as well. See, Yahtzee says that now, but oh, you should hear him when you're not listening. What? Just because <laughs> I have the intellectual security to occasionally allow myself to appear a bit thicker and a bit slower. No, you don't. <laughs> you fucking don't. Well, what are you getting at then? Um, just that, okay, like a lot of the, this game was made in 1990. Yes. I'd say a fair chunk of our viewers may have been born either then or post then and would have had no reason. Okay, it's not an intelligence thing, it's a matter of just experience. No reason to have well, ever I wasn't, touched it, Smash well, Brothers. The fact. Or Smash TV. So I'm gonna be doing that all fucking day and we're calling it Smash Brothers. That wasn't what I was referring to though. Yeah, and that, the There's thing the that I was that saying was just a snide remark to annoy YouTube commenters so they can jump on and go, Hey, fuck that guy. It was hardly a serious assessment of, like, you know, the entire, like, viewership that we have. But I, I made a snarky remark. This is, this is the conversation I believe I'm having. I made a snarky remark and you took it literally for a second. Because <laughs> I can't tell with you. You like to annoy me, because you, you hate, like, the little zen thing that I do. You like to get me... This is what Yahtzee does. He gets me angry before we do these things. Eat my shrapnel, Gabe. No, I'm going to kill the dude, because I don't want to eat his shrapnel. Oh, shit the fuck. All you, right. you got bald, son. That's not shrapnel. You a baller. Um, but yeah, like, yes, there are a lot of these games these days, and... Uh, a lot of them are actually kind of fun. Like, there was one that came with, um, one of the zombie games recently, like... Oh, uh, well, oh, that's... Do not even ask how many zombie dual joystick shooters there are in the world. Yeah, I know. It, it's, it, it's, it's been a bit swamped, but that's why I made the John Carter remark. It's basically, yeah, there's a lot of it these days, and it's easy to see this as sort of being derivative, but... I'm pretty sure this is one of the earlier ones. I don't think it's the earliest, but I, I see, know See, I'd have a... said, um, Kim, King Solomon's Mines for the very beginning of the Great White Hero genre. Which, oh, for the John Carter yes, reference. Yes, yes, yeah. Yeah, Well, I mean, I, I, I mean John Carter in terms of a lot of sci-fi tropes. Alan Quatermain uh, is the progenitor of such characters as Indiana Jones and Dog Savage and all of those. For more information, consult your local League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Extraordinarily uh, modern thinker, Ryder Haggard, when he wrote King Solomon's Mines. Really? Because it is a great white hero book, but uh, the actual hero hero who, like, saves the day is his, like... African, you know, Batman. All right. Who uh, becomes, he's a credit to his race. Who becomes the king of the lost tribe? And actually, there's passages in King Solomon's Mind where Ryder Haggard talks about how much he doesn't like the word nigger, <laughs> and he thinks Africa should be run by Africans. Remarkably, because he did actually live in it Africa. It must have, yeah. It must have been really hard to like. I suppose not. I mean, this is the thing. We. we it's interesting reading history because people 
back then race just existed. Like it wasn't like today where you kind of just go we're all the same. Back then, even if you weren't racist, race was still a big thing. Like you were just yeah, well, whatever you could... race you were. So, well, yeah. well, I mean, it's it's kind of complex to apply sort of modern ideas of what's racist and what's not to sort of those. Yeah, areas. I mean, is it necessarily racist to say that? people of such and such a race are usually have these qualities because of their usual upbringing. Well, it depends on how specific you want to get. Like, I think color is dumb because that's literally quite meaningless. But mm -hmm. you get, um, you know, you can sort of describe culture because culture is a participatory thing. Like, in order to be part of a culture, you have to acknowledge and participate in it. Yes, I think that's what the word participatory means. 